Ladies and gentlemen, in this short presentation I will give a short introduction to the topics I am working on with my group. My field is Machine Learning for Health Informatics. And I start with a famous quotation, Houston, we have a problem. And indeed, we have a huge problem in artificial intelligence and machine learning today, because successful methods are considered as black boxes. And here you can see a deep learning approach. And deep learning is rather today a deep opaqueness. And even if we understand the underlying mathematical principles, it's hard and difficult to understand, to retrace how a certain decision has been made. And you might ask now why this is becoming so important. This is due to the fact that the new General Data Protection Regulation, which is now in effect this year, calls for a right of explanation. But most of all, comprehensive results um, will be decisive in future for the creation of trust, acceptance, particularly in our domain, which is the health domain. And um, to deal with such problems, we follow an integrated machine learning approach. That means that we do algorithm development at the core. But before that, we spend a significant time for data mapping, data fusion, data integration. And then at the end of the day, we have a customer. That means a medical doctor, for example, or a biological researcher. And we have somehow to bring down the results from arbitrarily high dimensional spaces down into the lower dimensions to make it accessible for the human. And then we have always uh, to deal with privacy, data protection, safety, and security. And this makes up the machine learning and knowledge extraction pipeline. So successful machine learning cannot be done alone. It needs a concerted effort international without any boundaries. And we created a network. We work together with an international network of excellence called the HCI KDD approach. HCI stands for human computer interaction. KDD for knowledge discovery from data. We have a yearly conference and a new journal, an own journal. So what is our goal? Our grand goal is understanding context. That means we have to learn from prior data. We have to extract knowledge. We have to generalize. For example, that means guessing where probability mass function concentrates. But in the medical domain, we have the difficulty that we always have to fight the curse of dimensionality and to disentangle the underlying explanatory factors of the data. That means to understand the data in the context of our application domain, which is health informatics. Okay, so our grand goal, we want to augment human intelligence with artificial intelligence. So we work on a kind of a servo lenkung for our brain. That means to combine cognitive science with computer science. And um, we do this in the medical domain. The application domain is health informatics. And in the medical domain, this is very complex because we have two worlds. On the one side, we have the science. That means science of medicine. This is chemistry, physics, mathematics, pharmacology, immunotherapy, and so on. And on the other hand, we have the clinical, the clinical domain, which is the daily cure of the patients. And there is a gap between those two. And we want to bridge this gap because our central hypothesis is that information, not data, not knowledge, but information is the bridge to bring those two uh, closer together. Both of them need information, shared information. And um, what is the problem in building this bridge? Heterogeneity of the data, dimensionality, complexity, and most of our uncertainty. But here helps machine learning, for example, statistical probabilistic machine learning, fully automatically. And this is the grand goal of the overall international computer uh, science community, taking the human out of the loop. We can see this here. This is explicitly taking the human out of the loop, making it fully autonomically fully autonomous. And this works well in certain domains, for example, in car driving, autonomous car driving. 
And this works also well with all these um, uh, image classification methods, for example, you need a lot of data here, for example, 10 million images that you can safely discriminate a cat from a dog. And uh, even on par, deep learning is today even on par with humans, that means uh, they are kind of human level already, but there is a big problem. Sometimes we do simply have not this big data where these automatic algorithms benefit. Sometimes we have small amount of data sets. We have even rare events, for example, where we have no training samples whatsoever. And in the medical domain, we are always dealing with NP hard problems, for example, where we work in our group is on subspace clustering, K anonymization, protein folding, and you know proteins are the building blocks of life, so they are omnipresent and everywhere. So sometimes we still need the human in the loop, sometimes we even need more humans in the loop, for example, a group of humans in the loop. And currently we are working with our international colleagues on a combination in an international project. We work on a combination of, for example, deep learning approaches uh, with uh, knowledge graphs, ontologies, for example. And this should bring us further towards understanding the context of our application domain. For example, um, where the human can interactively bring in his expertise. For example, here in these stochastic and or graphs where a human can manipulate and bring in his domain understanding directly into the machine learning approach. Combine human expertise with machine expertise. So, Summarizing, coming to the conclusion, of course, computational approaches can find in arbitrarily high dimensional spaces what no human would be able to see. That's good. But sometimes we need the human and we want to augment human intelligence with artificial intelligence because human understands the context, which no algorithm on this planet can do to date. But this needs, of course, an effective mapping of Rn to R2 to make it understandable, accessible to a human end user. And this fosters responsibility, acceptance and trust because these black box approaches, which are dominant in the domain, cannot explain why a decision has been made. So, our grand goals uh, include to, that we deal with multitask learning. This helps to reduce catastrophic forgetting, for example. We work on transfer learning. Of course, this is not easy because learning to perform a task by exploiting the knowledge acquired when solving previous tasks is hard, but it is useful, very useful in our domain. And most of all, a solution to this problem would have major impact to artificial intelligence research generally and machine learning specifically. And last but not least, this needs a framework and our framework which we use is a multi-agent hybrid system. That means we deal with client-side federated machine learning and this ensures at the same time privacy by design, data protection, safety, security. This ensures acceptance and trust. And with these final words, I want to thank you for listening and I would be happy if you join our group. Thank you very much.